Okay, so uh, in the words of my favorite YouTuber, welcome everyone. Uh, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, I'm Andre. I am part of the uh, SUSE Manager Uni uh, work, uh, team who is working on this. And today I will so show you about the Uni Salbut. Uni Salbut. What the hell is Uni Salbut? <laughs> This is something we probably many people can't even pronounce. So we we do some digging. What is it? So, uni. Uni Salada de Uni. Nice salt plain in Bolivia. Fit interesting features, fauna flora. Yeah. But probably that's not why we are here. But that is the why uni is named by uni. Uh, so uni is basically some uh, are some framework for managing your individual machines, data centers, servers, some content life like uh, things, so configuration management, you know, patch management. There are plenty of things which can it can do. Uh, originally, it is based on uh, Red Hat Spacewalk, but uh, it is long way away from this. We changed to uh, many things on this, including what is uh, using for the configuration management which is in this case uh, salt stack salt. That's why it's named uni from, from the salt, uh, salt lakes or salt desert. And uh, for this uh, particular presentation, we will focus only on part of these, uh, uh, of, uh, these uh, topics. And that it's uh, a little bit about package management, why we need it, and image building, which is of course if you are wanting to deploy images. Uh, this is quickly about uni and now it is what's the salt boot salt boot is uh, something which is unique for for this we i haven't seen it anywhere else to be used in the in this way uh, it's basically specially crafted in it hardy in it which is the initial ram disk the thing which is booted right after the kernel and the thing is what we uh, added there is the complete salt stack uh, including that that means including also python uh that has little side effects like uh, that is almost 400 megabytes in size so it's much bigger than usual uh in it hardies around this but uh it has some other pros uh, which i will talk about later that's the far the that's the one part and the other part is the uh salt states and modules basically uh in the salt infrastructure you are always having some states which describe how you want your machine to be to look like, and this uh, in this special state we describe that uh, we want this image to be deployed over there and uh, to partition it this way and, and so on, and this is the the server part of the uh, of the salt boot. Salt boot then using these uh, salt states does the partitioning and uh, file system deployment things and so on. Um, this is also one of the many uh, try, uh, tries or instances how you can deploy over the network. Yesterday we had talk about the uh, carpet, the required magic carpet, which they do, which they basically try to do the same thing using the pixie boot or network boot to deploy the image. So this is the same, except it's based on salt and the configuration. It's based. It's uh, on different stored on different place than uh, in the image itself. Uh, so from here, uh, we are uh, because this task, talk is, um, I made it as a, from the user perspective, I will not go really into the details how it's implemented. Uh, so we will be focusing just uh, on image, on the actual image deployment, not how it's implemented. But uh, if you are interested in the details, in 2018 in Prague, Open Source Conference, I had this talk named Just Cell Boot, I guess. And uh, I was talking about the, uh, the, how it works in the salt itself and how to do with the pillars and so on. So, uh, this is our task today. So, we, what we have Uni, Uni Server, we have Target Machine, which we want somehow to deploy the image. Um, we described what is uni, so we are already done with this. Uh, we don't know what means, uh, for now, what, what means the deploy and what means the image. 
So we will start with the, uh, with the uh, images for now. Uh, images, we are using uh, Kiwi images as uh, good uh, SUSE people because in SUSE we, uh, the Kiwi is uh, used everywhere, so we use this as well. Um, it has some, it's, uh, some perks. And for Kiwi, uh, the, the, in Kiwi you specify some templates, some XML files and, uh, which will, with, in which you describe how the image should work. And uh, we also provide these uh, profiles. They are on the provided link. If you can read the QR code, you can maybe uh, access directly. Uh, but Kiwi is able to build multiple different type of images. ISO images, OM images, uh, VM, Deiki, uh, some hybrid images. Uh, we are interested in uh, KISS images, which are for formerly known as Pixie images. Um, Pixie has a like, kind of bad connotation that it's always for Pixie wood, but uh, it's not really just for it. With some uh, slight uh, scripts, you can deploy it on USB stick and deploy it from USB and uh, download anything from uh, and, and basically do USB boot. So kernel in Atari system is back a better describe description for these uh, images because at the end the end result from the Kiwi is you have kernel, you have special in Atari, and you have a file system image uh, which you can deploy then uh, on uh, some partition. And all of this building, uh, all, all of these images, uh, building of them is fully integrated with Uni. Uh, so what does it mean that this is uh, fully integrated with Unity? So here I will make a slight detour so we can know how to uh, get these images. When uh, I want to build image, I need to have some image sources, uh, I mean, package sources. I need to have some recipes how to this image should be built. This is in case these are the image templates. Then I need to have a place where I want to build these images, and then I need to place where I store these images and download them from. So with the packages, this is where we are back with Uni. Uh, where the package, the source for uh, for all of this is, is Uni. Now Uni has an uh, interesting concept here uh, with uh, with this package management, and it's divided in uh, three parts for our purposes. Uh, the first one uh, is, is the product. When you install your uni, you doesn't have anything in it. First thing, if you want to uh, use uni for some sensible purpose, is to synchronize some product, uh, be it open source leap or be it uh, slab, whatever. The first thing you synchronize the product. This is I mean, uh, simulating or this is something similar as uh, SMT or RMT when you just pull every package uh, from the upstream. Uh, down to your server and uh, store it here. Uh, when you sim when you synchronize the product, you will get so-called channels. Now this is basically the the in how we work uh, with uh, with you know, and we are doing we are working on this channels abstraction. With this, you can do really magical things like doing some uh, uh, some promotion between different uh, environment. That means that. When, uh, when you synchronize, you can freeze uh, uh, channels on some package versions. Then uh, when updates arise, you will create a new channels. Simplify, uh, simplifying a little, but you create a new channel, uh, test them out, promote them to, to the freezes, frozen one, and so on. So this is all in a content lifecycle management framework, and it's a topic for a quite long time, a longer talk uh, uh, for other time. So now we have uh, channels, and uh, we need to somehow uh, make them like so that I want just one key or some one string which will describe whole list of channels I, I want to I want to use. So for this we have the activation key concept. Uh, basically, you create one key, you assign different channels for it, and every time the key is used somewhere it will uh, take these channels and uh, assign it to the either machine or to image building or whatever. Uh, you can also, there is a little hint, uh, if you can see there is in the list of the child channels, in the, uh, uh, there is one which is not uh, from, uh, from Slay, this is Raku Devil, 
And this is how we get some custom RPMs, for example, in, uh, in it. You create a custom channel, uh, and then you can, uh, with this custom channel, you assign some repository, and it will synchronize this repository for the, for, to the uni. And you can add uh, this uh, uh, channel to the, or this sub, uh, custom channel to the activation key, and then it will be passed to, to, the, to the machines which are managed by uni. Just, just a little hint. So with this, uh, we have uh, we are done with packages. Uh, now with uh, image templates, I mentioned that we provided in South Boot. We have there was a link to our repository. So uh, that's the part for the, from the source. Uh, but we still need somehow in Uni to know that we want to use these packages, these sources, with these uh, specific templates. For this, in Uni we have image profiles, so-called image profiles. Um, uh, in these profiles, uh, there is some, again, graphical web UI interface, or uh, XML RPC, uh, or JSON RPC uh, calls, where you create some, under some label, you are pass the URL to the repository, or to the local, uh, uh, local path, where are your templates, and down there, this activation key, you select which one activation key you want to use, and that would link together the templates and, uh, uh, and the channels, so you can build it. So you now have, this, you now have the sources. Um, so we are done with, we are using some templates linked with the packages in previous step, steps. The third thing is the where we build the image. Uh, just quickly, uh, when you have some um, managed machine in the uni, you can promote it uh, down there, you can see, uh, you can promote it as an image build host. You click that, uh, apply state uh, for, to this, uh, um, apply the changes to this machine, and it will automatically, you know, will automatically install all you need, like Kiwi, uh, Git, uh, some other tooling which is, uh, which is needed, and it will automatically prepare the build host for you. It is recommended to be either VM or real hardware somewhere else. And also, critically, this is the important part of uh, security of the, of, the, of the chain, of the supply chain. Uh, so when you are, for example, build co a big company and you are building images somewhere, uh, build hosts are one of the, in the critical parts of the, of the security. So you need to take care that they are somehow protected together with, uh, with the unit itself, of course. So now we have almost everything. The last part is uh, image repository, and the image repository is Uni itself. So we now do synchronize channels, created image profiles. We have a build host, and the build host uh, uh, now we can trigger the build itself. Uh, the, there is just one UI for it. You select uh, the profile in previous step. You select build host. Uh, because you may have multiple of them, different architectures, different uh, OSs, and so on. Uh, so you select this, build it, and wait until uh, image is built. So we are now, this is how, uh, how are we now in our automated image deployment. We have, we asked Billhost to build image, and it gave, gave us the image and uh, now we are back in deploying the, deploying the image. So we can we specify what is image. We now know what this is. We still don't know what it means to, to deploy. When we say uh, deployment, usually uh, there are plenty of examples. Most most usually it is just a DD of some file of some disks to some uh, some file to some disk drive, and then others. When we are talking about automated deployment, we certainly don't want to use uh, uh, you know, some, manu some manual commands. So uh, as I was mentioning before, this is so basically another attempt to, or another idea how to do a networking uh, deployment from the, uh, using the Pixie. Pixie technology from the 90s using, uh, using TFTP, uh, which is from 80s. UFP is maybe it's little, uh, little uh, newer, 
and then of course HTTP UEFI, which is uh, newest. Yeah, it's still I don't know ten years maybe, but uh, they not many hardware are supporting the HTTP UEFI, even though it is probably the fastest, uh, just because of the they, it eliminates the TFTP protocol, uh, which is uh, uh, simple, resource intensive, and slow, and uh, not really a good fit. For example, with Kubernetes ecosystem. HTTP is uh, quite a good fit there. Um, this is one step uh, which is outside of Unity, which is not managed here. Uh, in, uh, uh, in my scenario, uh, we need to somehow trigger this uh, Pixie booting. Uh, and I'm talking now with the regular one, with the TFTP. Uh, this is the most code we will see in this talk. Uh, this is configuration snippet for the uh, DHCPD uh, server. Uh, basically, it supports uh, everything. There is the first section for HTTP boot, uh, UFI, uh, TFTP, and regular TFTP. So you got just put this into your subnet, config uh, subnet configuration of the DHCPD and uh, restart it. Uh, what it does, it just instructs the network uh, Firmware at the next server. It, on this next server, it should ask for this file and then uh, pass the execution to to it. Uh, one note for secure boot: uh, you instead of group FAI, you want a shim FAI in in uh, in case of secure boot, because group itself is not uh, uh, signed for the for secure boot. But we are talking about TFTP now, which is a little annoying. So how how do we that how do we get the TFTP server? Uh, here comes uh, UniProxy pod. Now this is a completely new thing, and uh, it provides many five containers. Uh, it's uh, some squid cache uh, for uh, packages and images. TFTP router. I'm specifying router because it's basically not a server. Uh, we are using uh, uh, Facebook TFTP library. And this, this library is just implementation of TFTP server in the Python, but it doesn't do anything, like it doesn't provide any files. On top of this library, there are, there's our wrapper, and it does that uh, as soon as there is TFTP request, it looks what this kind of request it is, uh, and it uh, transforms this to HTTP request. And it then passes it through the Apache, which I, which I didn't print here, through the squid cache, uh, and obtain the file we requested. So when you want uh, Pixie configuration, it goes to a TFTP router or TFTP thingy, <laughs> and then it's converted to HTTP GET request, and it is uh, then returned, and it will translate it back to a TFTP response and send it back to the, uh, the to the client. This is a, a new thing, uh, and as I was. Uh, uh, telling and there, the last two things, Salboot Broker, SSH tunnel, they are mainly there because uh, you can run this uh, proxy pod, uh, proxy containers, either in some shared network space, but you can have some dedicated networking for your machines. And when you and when you have dedicated networking, you may want to have them isolated from the general internet. Uh, so this acts as a middle proxy that you uh, that every request everything what the clients uh, client needs they can't access the regular internet it's not routed not forwarded but they need, need to go for salt connection through salt broker for http we go through apache and uh, ssh channel is uh, mainly to from uni to be able to access these machines through all of this uh, uh, all of this um, um, it's all isolations i will uh, briefly tell about the the proxy. Uh, we have two options. We have a Podman pod and uh, Kubernetes uh, deployment through Helm chart. Now the the Kubernetes deployment is not yet uh, merged in the Uni itself, but it's it's uh, in the uh, repository. It's ready to be merged, but we are waiting for for all the latest releasing things to be done. Um, 
We have web UI for it as well, so you don't have to <coughs> go to the your command line, but you, you can configure it in the web UI. But it's a rather large uh, formula, and in using the, com uh, the command line, it's really easier. This first thing will create uh, the proxy configuration for you, uh, called uh, config DGA uh, target. Uh, in the release version, it's zip. But then we found out that zip is uh, not really in on a uh, uh, slim micro, so we can't use unzip. So we, of course, uh, changed it to tarball. Tar uh, so this command will generate tarball with the proper configuration. And then uh, we will copy it to the, and extract it in the, in the, on the container host. And then we start uh, the proxy pod. Now you may ask, uh, where we do get these uh, systemd services. Now, the systemd services in the package we provide uh, as, uh, from, the, from uni tools. And to get to the uni tools, you need to have that the container host needs to be uh, sold, uh, registered to this uni, sold client for it. So then you may ask, why don't we have this in a state when it's already a sold client? Well, the question is that initially, uh, this was supposed to be standalone system. You don't need any. Uh, it, you don't need it to be managed by uh, CUNY. Then we found out that it's that we don't have yet infrastructure for it. So now it's in a hybrid state that uh, you need to be registered to the uni, but still there is no pre-created uh, salt state. But uh, that may change. So, uh, but this will work anyway. <laughs> so with this. With when you start it and look through the podman pods, uh, through the containers, you will see five containers, uh, all configured with it. Uh, with the, uh, and the name of this, this proxy example, or this should be the FPDN under which these pro containers are um, reachable. So this is something which other machines will, see, will use. So uh, this is uh, uh, then passed to the other to the containers. Uh, just uh, uh, for interesting, the config tarball, if you extract it, it will contain the certificates for, for validation, it will contain the, for the validation of the, um, that the uni you know, upstream server has the correct uh, certificate. Uh, it will also use some SSH keys, uh, which are then used to, which are uh, known for a uni, so uni can access it uh, through this proxy port. Uh, to the clients and some uh, configuration bits. Uh, there are some things which can be changed, but uh, it's uh, supported way is, is like this. So we can uh, how we are now standing now. We already have the image. We have the proxy port which with the TFTP uh, server, and we should we now can somehow deploy the machine. Since I already talked about that we have this Salboot in Tati with take care of deployment, so we now can change it to here that uh, we basically Salboot the image on the machine. Now there are questions like you have, you, now I was talking that we have one image, but you can build, you have 10 images, you know, 15 images, so how do you know like which image you want to deploy? Uh, I was also talking about partitioning, but I didn't specify any partitioning so far. Uh, so these are uh, the questions which we uh, need to answer and how we uh, approach it. Now, uh, in the salt, everything, uh, if, if you are not familiar with the salt, I specify the salt state, what are they, they specify, they talk about how the machine should look like. Now, uh, to get some data to it, to uh, some uh, Trustable data. We uh, in a salt we call we use salt pillars. Salt pillars are uh, unique for the individual machines. Or in case of your uh, uni, we have some advantages that we are we can get, create groups uh, group uh, pillars for some specific groups, not only for individual machines but for group of the machine. And these pillars are the sort of truth, and these pillars contains all the required information we will then uh, provide to the salt states. Um, how do we do that? We have 
uh, so-called salt boost group. Uh, in uni, we have uh, so-called system groups. These system groups uh, are just you know, regular, you know, just organize for organization purposes. You create group and put a bunch of machines in there, so you can better uh, organize things. Now, uh, with the with the salt you are able to uh, add a formula, which is called salt formula. Formula is a fancy name for salt state and in this case just salt pillars. Uh, it provides the, in the, the, uh, graphic, the interface, the uh, formula, uh, the form, uh, where you need to fill out fill a bunch of things. For the salt boot group, salt boot group uh, is uh, related to the proxy pod. Uh, so each machine which will be building through this proxy pod will get these uh, data, these uh, specified in here. And here we specify uh, where to download image from. You may ask why we need to specify this when we know the uni, when we know the master server. Well, the idea is that, um, still not abandoned idea is, that we may have some third party content delivery system. So there is some, we, we need to put uh, something to do where to image, uh, where to download the image. Usually, you put not the uni there, but the proxy itself, so it goes through the uh, through the squid system, through, through the caching. You can specify other things like uh, when uh, what image you want to boot, like uh, what image should be the default one to boot. Because when a new machine is booting up, there's still some you don't have any information about it, and but the pixie need to uh, provide some uh, some image to it. So either it takes the newest, or you specify some specific one. Uh, now it's not so much relevant, uh, SLE is, uh, sl uh, since uh, SLE 11 is uh, away, but maybe for uh, if you experiment with a 32-bit tumbleweed, for example, uh, you, you, when you have mixed 64-bit and 32-bit, you have to put some uh, specific boot image here, which is 32-bit because you can't boot 64-bit images on 32-bit hardware, but vice versa is possible. So when you have mixed environment, you need to put something which is uh, here. Um, with ARM, it's a different thing, because with, with ARM we have a different uh, uh, deployment mechanism. Uh, there's, uh, there's, there's still need some uh, uh, USB stick involved or some, something deployment on a, on a memory card. But I will. But that's in the documentation. I will not bother <laughs> with these details. Yeah, and one thing, one last thing about is the naming, um, because um, you may or may not have uh, host names already specified for for this machine you are trying to uh, to to boot, and for organizational purposes, uh, the cell boot needs to prepare somehow the the, the naming of the terminal. Of this not terminal, the, the machine you are deploying, and uh, if it if tri it tries a default, it's just a host name that it will it will prefix uh, the name with the salt boot group it is part of. So when you like, have a list of machines, you immediately know which uh, what is this machine part of the, uh, from what what proxy it is part of. Then there is some suffix, a random suffix, which uh, prevents some. Uh, conflicts uh, with, uh, uh, with SALT, because uh, SALT allows only one machine with the same ID. If you try to onboard another machine with the same ID and it has a different key, it will, it will dec decline the key. So there is a random suffix. But both can be disabled if you change, for example, to, F uh, to use fully qualified domain name, because FEDN should be unique. But so the SALT boot is trying to do reverse lookup, uh, of the IP addresses it got. If it finds any uh, QDN or some host name, it will use it if it's uh, instructed to do. But if not, it will reconstruct the name using the hardware type of, uh, of, the, of, of the machine. I will talk about it later. So you can change the naming here and so on. Uh, as soon as you save this, the uh, Pixie menu is generated with the configuration you specified here. Uh, there's a little background info. Uh, we as in UMI, UNI, 
uh, actually not writing um, the, the, the configurations for this uh, by hand or by Java code. Underneath this is another uh, installation server, which is called Cobbler. And all this are tightly integrated. When you build image, which is KISS image, uh, it will automatically create a Cobbler distro for you and some initial Cobbler profile. And when you create some, this cell boot group, it will create another cell boot, uh, another Cobbler profile, but a visible one in the in the menu and using the uh, the distribute the distro either by what you specify in the default image or the latest one. So this by this we can uh, answer the question where from we will get the image and what image we want. Uh, what the default image we want from uh, to default to to boot from. Now we need to answer the partitioning. Same concept. So again, cell boot for uh, I guess it's a formula now called just cell boot formula, and it's again a, a one group. Um, but there may be some. Uh, it can be done a little differently if you try to experiment. I mean, if you are booting just one machine, you can pre-create the profile for the machine, and you can assign the partitioning for only for one particular machine, or assign this uh, formula together to the cell boot group, and then all of the machine booted from this cell boot group will, ha will share the same configuration. But uh, there is a problem when you have multiple groups uh, and then there is a clash between pillars and it's not supported so it prude uni will uh, warn you that you surely you really uh, shouldn't make this anyway it's ui form uh, when you save it uh, similarly with the with the other one uh, it also creates a pil the pillar uh, the pillar is basically some yaml file so if you are not fancy of the web ui you can still write yaml file by hand in the correct places consult uh, documentation how to do so but you can do it in the files and then uh, uh, use it as well okay uh, one jump uh, and our hardware type groups as I was specifying about the hardware type uh, this is a special group with special naming where you, where you can took uh, uh, SMBIOS information, manufacturer and hardware and uh, system type. And when you name when you name it with using these details, uh, the uni when it registered when it detects clients with the same uh, as the SMBIOS information, it will automatically join the machine to this group. And when the pillar is already assigned to this group, it will get this partitioning. And in this partitioning, you also specify the name of the image you want to deploy. So it will uh, deploy the image. Now, this is a, a secret because all I co always call this as a salt boot I, uh, everywhere. But um, this is basically uh, the, the, the retail thing. I don't want to use retail. I don't really want uh, because every one time I use retail word, people got scared and run away. So that's why I am just uh, telling this as a, as a salt boot. Uh, but the idea about this is you have a store, you have uh, 50 identical machines, and these are identified with the same hardware type. Uh, you want all of them to have the identical image. So you, you have hardware type group, you specify their concrete partitioning for these machines, concrete image to this machine. This machine boot up, join this group, get the, its pillar and uh, cell boot can deploy it. And of course, if you have different type of machines, you have different type of hardware type groups and uh, they, you can select different images for uh, different uh, uh, these uh, machines. So how are we now? So we have basically almost image, uh, all Im the whole picture. We have image. Uh, we have uh, pillars partitioning, so we can try to deploy it. Now, um, now we go to to the to the question to the security of this thing, so that if I have an image, 
how can I prevent some just some random uh, people coming up, coming to my uh, you know either joining Wi-Fi or just uh, you know plugging into this uh, network socket and uh, get all this data from me. Uh, in salt, when you first connect to the salt, uh, salt master, uh, or when the salt minion is the, which is the client here. Uh, it's first started. It generates uh, some certificates for uh, for itself, and uh, then present these certificates to the to the salt boot uh, to the salt master. Uh, it is visible something like that. Uh, this is a screenshot from some some older version. And so when you boot salt boot, it will boot, would boot until you appear. You get some notifications uh, on the top of the screen. You get some uh, that uh, what salt master is being used. Uh, then if that is waiting for keys and so on. And when it connects to this to this uh, uh, to the master, salt master through proxy, when everything is working, you get the name of the of the machine. In this case, it's because of the retail. It's called terminal ID. Uh, this you can see how it's constructed. The first uh, thing is the name of the salt boot group. Then you will have the uh, you know, the SMBIS info, which in this virtual machine virtual machine is overwritten by SUSE and test uh, graphical. And then uh, you have some random thing, but it's no longer this long. This is really old screenshot, I think, four years maybe. So now it's really really uh, it's a little more different. And then you have fingerprint of the certificate of this uh, minion. And the fingerprint you see also on the unit itself. So you compare uh, what some fingerprint you see uh, on the terminal or the machine, what you have on your uni, uni uh, system. And if it matches, you accept it. Now this is not useful really for uh, deploying hundreds of computers uh, in uh, these stores or banks or whatever. So there are some ways how to avoid it, like using shared secret. Uh, uh, then uh, it's, it is called uh, auto sign grains. Uh, when uh, uh, you can uh, inject or you can uh, inject, uh, to, for example, to init RD some special uh, secret, or or you can have some extra storage for it. And if it's configured, uh, the salt minion, the client will send these grains to the master. And if master compares it, see, aha, I know this, and will let you in automatically. But, but does yes. it really help? Because um, it's always the first connection, and mm -hmm. you have a man in the middle at the first connection, and you don't have a, a different path than the network, you always are, are in trouble. That's, that's well, always a the idea is that the fingerprint will not match if someone is in the middle, because they will have, the, they don't have, the private key yes, is on the middle. Yes. Yes, of course, of course. And in the case... But if you do the, if you want to automate that, yeah. you actually need a different path besides that. Well, uh, when you have the auto sign grains, for example, on the uh, USB stick, which you can enter, insert it, uh, the, the thing is how the salt minion send it. On the first connection, these auto sign grains are sent together with uh, this first connection. So even when it's untrusted... Uh, but that's the first but connection where you, you actually rely that there is no man in the middle. Yeah, but uh, hmm. as, far, as far as if I understood correctly. Um, so the only way I yeah. see at the moment would really be to have yeah. a, a crypto token something with a separate yeah. disk that you provide from a different yes. path. So in that case, I would hmm. agree and say, okay, this is a different type of uh, transport, uh, uh, how you get it there. Yeah. Yeah, I will need to think more about it, <laughs> uh, but... But if you can do it over a disk, it's okay. Yeah, I, I yeah you can do it over... Uh, yeah. yeah, of course, uh, if you inject in any tardy, you can, you can intercept, because the FTP is not uh, secure there any, at all. No. The TFTP part is the thing which, uh, need, uh, which but is... But it's not only TFTP. TFTP yeah, in a tardy completely, yeah. If you have someone mm. getting in there and booting mm. some, some machine up and you do not know that mm. it's a different machine than what you expect, mm. you are always stuck. Yeah, that uh, I, I will need to, I will need to <laughs> talk. Uh, we can, we can discuss it later. But I think, uh, I think that, out, uh, that there, there should be some, uh, 
uh, what is uh, some validation, but I yeah I, I can back to uh, back to it of course. But it's true that uh, there is still some things to uh, improve because uh, this all thing can also be uh, completely disabled on a submaster. You can even disable or completely any validation and auto accept everything, even though it's discouraged. The thing which is recommended is to have this uh, second channel when you compare the, the fingerprints. So would you be able to, that's a much different question here, would you be able to inject something into the image that is deployed during the deployment? If I can, no. No, no. Uh, the, in the, the, right, as soon as you accept the key and validate, assuming that you validate the key that is right, uh, yeah. Uh, then the, uh, this this is before any image is deployed. This is before anything. Uh, so this is just the init ID. Uh, when you validate the fingerprint is correct, so you trust this machine. Then uh, it will get all pillars which are encrypted between. Uh, your, uh, yeah, and in this case, in that pillars you have the image name and the image hash. So uh, when you try to intercept, for example, the image. Uh, it will but then after deployment it validates whether it's correct image or not uh, with uh, with validation and uh, and then uh, I, there you can also build encrypted images in Kiwi and uh, the password for uh, for the for mounting or decrypting this image or mounting the encrypted partition is also passed through the pillars so this way you can when someone stole the machine uh, with the disk deployed. Uh, they can't do the decryption keys because decryption, decryption keys come from the salt uh, system, salt pillars. Yeah, but the first, the first thing about the autosound grains, yeah, I, I will need to check this. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's what I was telling the image validation. When image is uh, image is downloaded, it, the hash is, is computed for of the deployed image, and it's compared from what is in uh, in the pillars. Uh, encryption, you, it is passing the encrypting, uh, the encryption keys. Uh, so the latest, the final picture is like this, uh, the workflow. We have a Uni server, we have built host, we build image, we configure proxy. Uh, this is just one time job, of course, we don't need to do that every time, but you need to have some, some form where the TFTP server is. And then uh, the machine, uh, we need to validate the fingerprint and with this, uh, we also tell Uni that uh, to which proxy we are we belonging to. Uh, we uh, validate it, so so this is accepted, and we pass the salt boot pillar for it, and apply the salt boot state. The salt boot state uh, uh, says that uh, do the partitioning, and then says what image they want, and the image is passed uh, back uh, and deployed to the machine, which then continue booting, and at the end uh, it will ping back. Uh, when the machine when the machine is booted, it pinged back to the unit because uh, because uh, uh, unit wants to know everything about the machine, the hardware configuration, the software deployed, for some inventory reasons, for some uh, mo monitoring uh, whether the the packages are updated and so on. And we it it makes no sense to do this validation in the unit RD, so all of the validation is postponed until. Uh, until the uh, machine boot uh, pings back that it's ready. If you are doing the regular boot uh, bootstrap of the machines, so the machine is already installed, this step is done basically immediately after you uh, accept the fingerprint that you know this. And uh, just one quick uh, thing about Uni images. Uh, when you build the image, uh, Uni does the inspection of the image and it gathers all the uh, packages which are used for it, package versions and uh, then it is comparing with its own database and it monitors for you whether the packages are on updated or not uh, it, it notifies you whether there is some uh, CV uh, reported against it but unlike the build service it does not do manual image uh, it doesn't do automatic image buildings uh, rebuilds you need to manually rebuild it so you have some stable uh, or controlled environment so the machine the image is not no still the images are not changing under your uh, under your hands. Yeah, and I am four minutes over my time. 
So uh, I will be available for any questions, and we can discuss this. Uh, check this uh, how it works in uh, with the auto sign grains, and so after it. So. Uh, we have uh, x uh, 64 bit and ARM raspberries. There's no others. No others yet. At least we didn't try even try it yet. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you are interested more on for uni, you just uh, look at our uh, in our homepage and there is a link for Git uh, repository and documentation. This cell boot is documented under the retail section. If you are looking for. Okay. Thank you.